dear colleagues, my name is Jula Ferenc Search. I would like to share my six months progress report with you. My topic is investigating the safety and efficacy of surgical and conservative knee cartilage preserving techniques. About myself, I work as a resident at the Ujjogi Hospital, the Department of Orthopedics and Traumatology. My supervisor is George Mark Hangodi. Our vision is to decrease the number of total knee arthroplasties in Hungary, and we would like to achieve that by increasing the use of knee cartilage preserving techniques. We have two ongoing projects right now concerning knee cartilage preserving techniques. Uh, our third project uh, started in September of last year. It's comparing the safety and efficacy of meniscal repair and meniscectomy during anterior cruciate ligament reconstructions. It's going to be a meta-analysis of the topic. So about the background, as you can see on the picture, the anterior cruciate ligament connects the femur to the tibia, and it also, its role is to providing anterior, posterior, and rotational stability. There are around 200,000 ACR ruptures per year in the United States alone, and uh, <coughs> the, the ACR reconstruction rates have been increasing lately. In the US, annually, it's between 60 and 175,000, and it's around 3,500 in Hungary. During an ACR rupture, there is a possibility for other lesions. So 55% of the cases, there is a lateral meniscal tear, and around 45% uh, of the cases, there is a medial meniscus tear. Okay, so what are meniscus? Uh, they are in, uh, in the knee joint. They are a C-shaped fiber cartilage. The role is to increase in the stability and to distribute load. There are two major operative treatments for a torn meniscus. One is menisectomy, which is basically removal of the damaged parts, but it can lead to instability. And the other surgical option is meniscal repair, which is suturing or uh, fixing the torn meniscus, and this way we can keep the stability of the knee joint. It has been shown that uh, repairing the meniscus can prevent early onset osteoarthritis. But still, in 94% of the cases, there is a meniscectomy performed, and only in 6% of the cases, there is meniscal repair. So our aim was to compare the safety and effectiveness of meniscus repair and meniscectomy during ACI reconstructions. So this is our clinical question. Uh, <clears throat> we are uh, comparing the two surgical interventions. Our populations is people who have concomitant ACL and meniscal tears, and our main outcomes are clinical outcomes, but we are also interested in radiological and septic outcomes as well. So our hypothesis is that the meniscus repair is going to be superior to meniscectomy during the ACL reconstruction. Okay. We conducted our systematic search in October of last year. We had initially more than 10,000 articles. After the selection process, we have 24 eligible full texts. Okay. So our main outcome is a Liss Home score. Liss Home score is a patient reported subjective outcome. It's widely used for knee injuries. It consists, consists of eight groups uh, that measure activity uh, and symptoms and uh, it ranges between 0 and 100. So this is our forest plot. We included three articles. In two articles, we could separate the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus injuries. And uh, we compared the list home score changes from baseline to after surgery postoperative results. As you can see, the mean difference of mean differences is minus 2.4, uh, which is considering it's a 100-point score system it's a not significant change, neither mathematically nor clinically. Okay, we have another uh, outcome in progress. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't finish the forest plots yet. It's the knee injury and osteoarthritis outcome score. With this score system, we will be able to compare all five subgroups of the score system and also compare the medial and lateral meniscus. Okay, so our strengths that uh, since the last uh, meta-analysis from 2018, we have several new articles, so our meta-analysis is going to be more comprehensive than before, and as I already mentioned, we have several outcomes in progress. Our limitations is that uh, we couldn't include any RCTs. We included mostly retrospective studies and a few prospective studies. Uh, also, uh, another different uh, the problem is that the, there are different types of meniscal tears, and they can have different types of uh, surgical options. 
there was a lot of heterogeneity in terms of time to surgery and follow-up time, and also there are different ACI reconstruction techniques. Okay, so our conclusion is that based on our results, we did not find a significant difference in least home score change between the two surgical options. This is one to two years of follow-up. So our implication for practice that uh, meniscectomy can be, can be just as effective as meniscus repair during ACI reconstruction based on patient reported outcomes, talking about one to two years, so it's a medium-term outcome. Uh, our implication for research is that there should be uh, different types of studies uh, depending on dip different types of meniscal injuries. We should have results at different follow-up times, so at one year, two years, five years, and ten years, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. Also, we need high-level RCTs with standardized research protocols and outcomes, and the studies should be also done at different age groups. And in general, orthopedics should present their articles more accurately. Okay, so our second project starts in November of last year. It's investigating the safety and efficacy of intraarticular injections in the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. It's going to be a network meta-analysis. Little bit about the background. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease that results from breakdown of joint cartilage and underlying bone. The most common symptoms are pain, swelling, and decreased range of motion. Osteoarthritis is affecting around 30 million people in the United States alone, and it has been reported that knee osteoarthritis is almost 80% of all osteoarthritic cases. Okay, so the main treatment options for knee osteoarthritis, it can be either surgical, which, which is mainly total knee arthroplasty, as Ben mentioned, and there can be conservative options. One of the most widely used conservative options is intraarticular injections. They present a low risk of harm by providing short-term pain reduction and improved joint function. So several of these injections exist, for example, corticosteroids, PRP or hyaluronic acid or many more. But the problem is that despite having so much options, we doesn't really have a clear recommendation right now. Uh, also, recent studies have uh, shown great success when combining hyaluronic acid with PRP. So our aim is to compare the effectiveness and safety of different intraarticular injections. So that's our clinical questions. We are obviously investigating patients with knee osteoarthritis, and we would like to compare these different intraarticular injections. Our main outcome are clinical scores, as well as septic complications. And our hypothesis is that if we combine hyaluronic acid with PRP, it's going to be superior to the other options. Our clinical implication is that by improving the pain and function in osteoarthritis, we can, in, in short term, we can decrease the number of total neoarthroplasties. We are planning to do the systematic search this month. Okay, so this is our two ongoing projects right now, and I would like to finish with a quote from Toy Story to infinity and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. I wanted to ask you that about the second project. Um, is, uh, is there a previous study, or, or why uh, do you think that uh, hyaluronic acid and PRP uh, would be superior to any other uh, injections? Well, uh, as I mentioned, there is uh, uh, an RCT from last year, which says that uh, it has very promising results. And we believe that there is a lot of type of injections, but probably the one that is going to be the best is, which is a combination. And we just believe that hyaluronic acid is pretty widely used in our uh, hospital, and, but also PRP is not available in Hungary, as we know, and that's why we think if we combine these two, we can have the best possible outcome. Going back to my previous question concerning the ECI repair and the early and late osteoarthritis, looking at your first uh, study, uh, ACI repair, Meniscal repair, I'm sure the early and the late osteoarthritis is definitely different than uh, average. Uh, you said uh, in the morning and in the afternoon that uh, if you repair the ACL, if you don't repair this, it doesn't really matter from the respect of uh, arthritis. But if you repair the meniscal uh, rupture as well, 
together with the ACRE prime, sure, the secondary osteoarthritis, it doesn't really. Uh, yeah. The problem is occur. that uh, these follow ups were about one or two years. Probably at five or ten years follow up, we will see a bigger difference, yes. Yeah, along this line, just the formal logic that there is the first study, and the first study it is probably not significant, but there is a strong tendency. I mean, on the left, okay. And in the last study, that's just on the, on the middle line. In the middle, so yes. no effect at all. Is there any difference between those? Because, I mean, as, as we saw in many, I mean, it doesn't matter whether this is about bone or this is about something else, the pancreas or whatever, that in many studies, actually, the, the starting point is actually quite wide range. So therefore, the oats and, and also, I mean, the conditions are different. So when you put all this together, you just get nothing. And then we say, well, very heterogeneous or so. But, so is this still a place of this that in, if, in, if you do this in a certain way, then actually it is going to be effective? Well, first of all, the heterogeneity is 0% in this <laughs> forest plot. No, no, but I mean, but that's statistical, you see. Yeah, I mean, statistically, yeah. but, uh, yes. Regarding the articles, there wasn't any major differences between them. So all of them used uh, autologous hamstring uh, autographs for, for the ACR reconstruction. And there are two major types of meniscal repair with sutures or, or with uh, devices. But they are generally in the same ballpark in all these articles. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. So my, what I understood is that you're comparing meniscectomy with meniscal repair, and you didn't find any significant difference between the two interventions, right? Yeah, so we so compared both of them with ACR reconstruction. So ACR reconstruction and meniscectomy, and ACR reconstruction and meniscus repair. Yeah, so my question is, is there any protocol or guideline when to use meniscal repair and when to use meniscectomy, or does it depend on the uh, doctor, like what he prefers well, to do, well, or usually what? So there is no clear guidelines, but usually what they say: if if it's repairable, you should repair it, and if it's not repairable, you shouldn't repair it. So it's very vague. That's why we are doing this. Yeah. Actually, I had almost the same question. We saw that uh, the, if I remember well, 94% of the cases the meniscus was uh, taken out. Yes and only in 6% was it repaired. And there is a very good reason for that, and you know it, because the uh, indication for meniscus repair is very, very yeah. narrow. Going back to your question, if it's fresh, if it's close to the capsule, and, uh, and if the patient is young, then you can try it. So it's almost, it's very rare to have a patient like that. And in my opinion, probably, you try to compare two different patient pools because one is the one who is young, active, having a fresh injury, and having a meniscal tear, which is quite huge, but close to the capsule. While in the other group, you have probably older patients with a chronic injury, with some small degenerative and off the capsule uh, injuries, injuries, which just you can take out without any major problem. What do you think about that? Uh, in some sense, I completely agree with you, but uh, we also mentioned in the uh, limitations part, that's why there should be more articles in different age groups or, or by the uh, type of, types of the ruptures, because usually they are like in the whole pool in the articles itself. So we couldn't distinguish between those. We would, we would make subgroups if we could, but we couldn't. Mm -hmm.